Hey there friends, it's great to be with you today and I am so excited about our lesson because we have guest storytellers again and that's going to be so fun for us to see. Before we get started on our lesson, let's go ahead and light our candle the way that we always do. Do you remember last week when we talked about being salt and light? And we can be reminded with our candle now of several different things. We can re be reminded, first of all, that Jesus lights up all of the dark places. We can be reminded that the Holy Spirit comes to us and lights up all of the world with what the Holy Spirit has to say. And then we learned last week that we can also be light in this world. So as you have your candle here, take a minute and think about how you feel with that light and what it makes you think about today. The other thing I want you to do is just grab a friend and squeeze them a little bit. Maybe it's mom or dad or grandma or a sibling and just let them know that it's a gift that the two of you or the group of you get to be together today. Now, for our story time, there's a couple of different things that I want us to get out of our story time today. Number one, we're going to be talking about a story where there's four friends, whoops, four, not four. There's four friends that come together to help one person who is paralyzed and can't walk. They help that person get to Jesus so that that person can be healed. And that in and of itself is a pretty cool story and it allows us to see hope in a different way. But then the other part of the story that we're gonna talk about a little bit is the fact that this story actually is in three different books of the Bible. So it is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And one of the things that's interesting with stories that show up in different books of the Bible is that you get the same story, but with different facts. And so I'm going to have some of our youth friends tell us a little bit about an experience that they all had together. And we're going to see how they don't share the exact same facts either. So it'll be pretty fun. Let's get started. Our story today is called Jesus Heals a Paralyzed Man. And this version is based on the version that's in the book of Mark. However, this story also exists in Matthew and Luke. So let's hear what the version that is based on the book of Mark has to say. One, two, three, lift, shouted four friends together. They each grabbed a corner of the mat and lifted up their friend who was paralyzed. One step at a time, they began their journey to find Jesus. The four friends were filled with hope. Maybe Jesus could hear, heal their friend's legs so he could walk again. After many miles, the friends spotted a big crowd surrounding a little house in the distance. That must be where Jesus is, they exclaimed. At the edge of the crowd, the four friends began to worry. This crowd is too big, one said. We can't get through it. There are too many people, another added. We can't go around them. I have an idea, a third friend yelled. Let's go over them to the roof. Inside the house, Jesus was teaching about God. Thump! Jesus stopped teaching. Boom! A crack appeared in the ceiling. Crash! Chunks of mud dropped to the ground as the roof caved in. Four faces peeked inside through a big hole. It's Jesus, they exclaimed. The four friends lowered the man on the mat into the room. Jesus looked up at the faithful waiting friends. He looked down at the paralyzed man. Your sins are forgiven, he said. Some people in the crowd whispered angrily, only God can forgive sins. Which is easier, forgiving or healing? Jesus asked them. I will do both. Turning to the man on the mat, Jesus commanded, Get up and walk. Your legs are healed. The man jumped up from the mat, 
Hooray, shouted the four friends. Amazing, the group gasped. Praise God, we've never seen anything like this. And that's the end. See how the guy got up and is super excited about jumping up on his newly healed legs. So now we've read our story out of our storybook Bible. And that's just kind of one version of this story. But now let's take a look at our guest storytellers and let's really watch as they try to act out the story, how hard it probably was for these friends to carry their buddy all the way to see Jesus. So a big thank you to all of my co-stars today. Yay, co-stars, woo! We have Allie and Ella and Heather and Lynn and Megan. Megan is our friend who is paralyzed. And if you're paralyzed, it means that you can't walk. So in order for Megan to get healed by Jesus, she had to have four friends who thought it was a good idea and who got her all the way from where she was laying on her bed all the way to where Jesus was preaching. So we're going to take a look and see how hard or easy it might have been for these friends to get their paralyzed friend to see Jesus. All right, ready friends? We're each going to grab a corner. One, two, three. All right, here we go. Don't let our paralyzed friend fall out of her bed. She's already a little bit wonky. Lift it higher, Noah. Fall out of the bed. Okay, let's stop, take a break. Now this is important because they would have possibly had to go a mile or more. And we have gone sorry, I was laughing about so 20 yards. <laughs> so we're gonna keep going, but keep in mind in this story, they probably had to take some breaks. All right, here we go. One, two, three, up. Oh, we're doing better now. Oh, <laughs> can't go over it. Gotta go around it. We're gonna get all the way over here. Where is Jesus? We're gonna pretend that, oh, let's pretend that Jesus is over by that raised bed. Because a lot of the time Jesus had to be standing up on something so that his followers could see him. Good thing we're in the shade at least. Alright, now, carefully let's put our patient down. <laughs> Now that wasn't that How easy. Guys doing? We're good. We're good. We're so glad you didn't have lunch. Now, <laughs> here's the next important thing. This story existed in a couple of different ways in different books of the Bible. So in the book of Matthew, the friends just take the paralyzed friend to see Jesus. And that's all he says, because Matthew liked to have things pretty condensed. Now, we're gonna examine one other part of the story that makes it seem even harder. And like the friends were more dedicated because in the Mark version of the story, they climb up the side of a house and they cut a hole in the ceiling and they lower their friend down. So let's take a look at this. Okay. Wait, my knee is going. Okay. Wait. Okay. So lift her up first. All right, so in the other version of the story, the friends actually carry their, <laughs> their paralyzed friend up a flight of stairs to the roof of a house. So let's just see what this would have been like. <laughs> are you sensing that this would have been really hard? <laughs> because we are. Poor, our poor Megan. <laughs> is really in dangerous position right now. So this would take, Ella, why don't you hop up there? This would take so much dedication on the part of these friends to get this buddy of theirs all the way up. And then how in the heck are they gonna lower that buddy back down? Guess what? We don't have a plan for that at all. 
It was probably really hard for these four friends to carry their buddy all the way to see Jesus because it wasn't probably like carrying somebody just across the backyard. They had to carry this person all the way through town. And then what about the part of the story where they walk up the side of the house, which in Jesus' time it was pretty normal to have steps on the side of a house because they did hang out on top of the roof sometimes. But then how do you think somebody would feel if all of a sudden there was a hole cut in the roof of their house and then there's somebody that's being dropped down? And I don't know if you noticed with our storytellers, we couldn't even figure out how to do that part. It just felt too dangerous to do with our friend. So the other thing that is interesting about this story, because it does exist in three different books of the Bible, is that you get different facts in each one of the telling of the story. So like in the Matthew version, it doesn't talk about them going up on the roof of a house. It just talks about that the friends took the other friend on his bed to see Jesus. Jesus forgives his sins. The guy is healed. That's it. So the Matthew one is pretty short. It's the other Gospels where we learn that they have to climb up a flight of stairs and they have to cut a hole in a roof. And so some of the other people give us a little bit more detail. Now what I did is I asked our teenagers how they remembered an experience that they all had together. So a few weeks ago, they were all at my house for a bonfire. And so we asked each one of them if they were to write a book about the bonfire, what three things would they make sure were in there? If I were to write a story about the campfire, I would include s'mores, songs, and games. If I were to write a story about the campfire, I would talk about us trying to burn the Gatorade bottle, playing soccer, and crossing s'mores. If I were to write a book about the bonfire, I would say that we ate s'mores, tried to melt a Gatorade bottle, and played soccer. So did you notice, after looking at all three of those video clips, that they weren't all the same? Some pe one of the girls talked about soccer, one of the girls talked about games. Maybe soccer and games were the same thing, but because they didn't compare notes, we don't know that for sure. Two of the girls talked about the fact that they tried to melt a Gatorade bottle with the bonfire. The other girl didn't mention that at all. So the point is, and it's pretty interesting, to say that even though these three people experienced the same event, and it was only two weeks ago, and they didn't say the same things, that it really makes a lot of sense how things in the Bible could be a little bit different, even though those people experienced the same things. Because it's believed that those Bible stories were written way after those things happened, anywhere from 35 to 50 years. So that's the other thing that I wanted to take out of our learning today, is number one, to understand that hope happens a lot of the time where a group of people all gather for the same cause. That's the number one thing. The number two thing is to understand that within the Bible, there are certain events that are covered by more than one book. And just because they don't 100% agree doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't actually happen. Let's pray. Dear God, our time together is so precious. And we thank you for the reminder that hope is something that doesn't just happen within one person's heart. Hope is something that gets spread through communities because more than one person cares deeply about making something good happen. In your name we pray, amen. All right, friends, I hope you have a great week. We'll see you soon, bye-bye.